Hey everyone, Complex back with another video and today, well today we're talking about Planet Stronghold 2. It just recently released on Steam and I'm utterly addicted to this game. It is a visual novel based game with a combat system to it. The combat system reminds me a lot of a Darkest Dungeon and I'm just having a blast playing this game. I'm enjoying the story, I'm enjoying the companions, there is romance in the game, so it's pretty much hitting on all of my major favorite things for a game and so today i wanted to walk you through some tips and tricks that'll help you get started in planet stronghold 2. So my first tip is going to be to always have a psionic or a scout character with you when you're in the middle of combat. Now the reason for this is because they are the only two classes that can use your healing packs. So I was a little confused about this when I first started, but what ends up happening is that your soldiers and your guardians can't heal themselves using the med packs. You actually need to have a psionic or a scout character use them on them and to do that all you have to do is when it is your scout or psionic character's turn click on the guardian or the soldier that needs healing or you could even use it on another psionic or scout character or even yourself you will see that what pops up there's a little box you click on it and you will see that you have the option to pick any of your med packs or the other types of healing aids that are available to you and then you can just apply it to that character that needs healing so that is a way to quickly heal your characters in the middle of combat. Now, when you head over to your colony screen, you get an overview of how many people need to talk to you. You also can see if you have any mail or you might even see an icon next to somebody's name because there is a quest that they need to give you or you need to complete. The cool thing is if you hit I on your keyboard, you can see how many days are left before you need to talk to them or before they want to talk to you. And it's super useful in that you can plan out what you're going to be doing and how soon you need to do it by who needs to talk to you. Also, if you're super impatient, the closer that you get to the romance is happening, you might just want to talk to your potential love interest a lot. And this will let you know how many more days you have to wait until they'd like to chat with you. Now for tip number three, let's talk about the non-combat options. There are a wide variety of those within the game, such as charm, there's survival, engineering, explosives, etc. Now, the cool thing about this is that these provide a different way to get around combat. So sometimes you'll be given an option that you could charm someone or you could use survival to get around something. So that way you don't actually have to do battle. You can find a different approach to solve a problem or you can use these different options in order to make a battle easier for you or to take out some enemies ahead of time. Now, with that, I would suggest having each one of your companions completely level one of these options. So then that way, no matter what happens, you always have a companion available to help you through it. Because when that screen pops up, if let's say you pick charm, a screen pops up with all of your available companions, and then you can pick from whichever one has the highest charm option. Now, the even cooler thing, though, is that every time you leave the colony, all of your companions come with you, which means if you've been diligent about making sure each one of them um, is completely ranked in one of the options, you're always going to have guaranteed success through these non-combat options, which I, for one, really love. I love using um, charm or survival or explosives or anything like that to find a unique way to solve a problem. And well, this game allows you to do it. Now, tip number four is all about your party's gear. You want to make sure that it is always leveled and leveled to the appropriate level. So, for instance, if you have a weapon that is a level 15 and you are a level 20, you're going to want to find yourself a level 20 gun instead of keeping that level 15 gun, even if it has better stats than the higher level items. I personally have found that combat goes a lot smoother if you keep your weapons to the appropriate level level that you are or even to what fight you're doing now the easiest way to keep track of everybody's inventory because there are a lot of companions there's a lot of inventory to go through is there are a lot of merchants that'll just pop up out of nowhere and be like hey you want to take a look at my inventory <laughs> i always click yes and then from there you can easily navigate over to your party screen and go through everybody's inventory there so i do use those merchants as a reminder to oh go through everybody's inventory and when I'm going through everybody's inventory, if you look over in the right hand side box, that shows all of the extra gear 
that you have that isn't equipped on anybody, you might sometimes see stuff that is highlighted in green or in a green square box. That means that it is better than whatever that person currently has equipped. So I'll normally like click on the helmets and then I'll run through everybody's helmets really quickly, see if there's anything better. Then I'll click on armor. I'll do the same thing. And then I will also click on the guns and do the exact same thing there. So it's super quick, super smooth. Once you do it a time or two, you get into a really good habit of it. And it has made the fighting a lot more enjoyable and also a lot quicker for some of the fights. So make sure your party's gear is always leveled. Now, my last tip is talking about visual novel mode. That's right, if you're somebody that doesn't like combat and you're still interested in this game, good news, you can go ahead, jump on into visual novel mode and just enjoy the story. Now, a few things I did want to make note of though before you dive into visual novel mode. One is that if you start in visual novel mode, that is the mode you are staying in throughout the entirety of that playthrough. And vice versa, if you start with combat, you can't go ahead and hop into visual novel mode. The modes are two completely separate ones within the game. The other thing to note is if you do start in visual novel mode, there is a potential that you will miss a few different uh, cutscenes that might happen within combat. So that is something to be aware of. Now, if you do start in combat mode, you can of course change your combat difficulty while you're playing. So there's no need to worry about that. If you start in on like normal or hard and you're like, eh, I kind of want to go down to normal or easy, no worries. You can switch that out at any time. But y'all, that is it from me today. Those are my top five starter tips for Planet Stronghold 2. Hopefully this helped if you were having any questions about the game or you were just having trouble in a particular area. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments down below or go ahead and find me on Twitch. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your night and or day, depending on where you are in the world. And I will catch you next time. Bye, guys.